morning, church. It is so great to be sharing this message that God has blessed in my heart with you. Um, so why don't you uh, open with me from the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 12 as we look at this idea of our journey with God as one of running a race with patience. Hebrews chapter 12, reading from verse 1 to 3, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. So in this day and age, life has become more and more complicated and unpredictable and times are moving fast and evolving so fast that it is impossible to keep up with everything at the same time. At the blink of an eye, we are guaranteed to miss something. The atmosphere is so filled with doom and gloom, we hear bad news every day on TV, on social media. There is bad news all the time and it has become the norm. Have you noticed that every time nowadays the first thing that comes to mind when we receive a call is what is it now? We are so desperate for good news and if we could just get a good word even even if in its simple, simplest way even just a it's going to be okay. It's good enough. So today I've come with a word simply titled Run with Patience because the journey we are going with God is long but everything is going to be okay as long as God remains in control. As long as we don't take the will. It might take long but most certainly God has something good in store for you and me. So firstly, in our scripture from Hebrews 12, it tells us that the first positive thing in this run of patience is that we have the great cloud of witnesses. If we take a step back from chapter 12 and take a look first at chapter 11, we can see that chapter 11 connects us well with chapter 12. Chapter 11 is a chapter of faith which mentions the heroes of faith and how they prevailed in remarkable situations by faith. And then we enter chapter 12 when it tells us about being surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and let us lay aside every weight and sin. We in our journey and our race of patience and perseverance are being cheered on by the people of faith mentioned in chapter 12, 11. The likes of Abraham, Jacob, Moses, Rahab, and Samson. Great men and women of faith that are cheering you up, encourage you, encouraging you, saying no matter what you are going through, you can overcome. You can persevere because God is with you. You have a great cloud of witnesses cheering you on. This cloud of witnesses is also an example for us of what the church should be today. That when we gather as church on Sunday or in home groups, we gather to encounter together the power of God, the power of the Spirit, but we also gather to encourage one another as brothers and sisters in faith, to lean on each other's faith stories and to cheer each other on. We need to share the stories of what God is doing in our lives to encourage others and we need to read the stories of great cloud of witnesses in order to believe and be uplifted to be patient and keep trusting in God in that he has never failed and you won't start now and through this 
clouds of witnesses, old and present. We need to put away every destruction and let us focus on the main thing, the race before us. One thing I have noticed that is inevitable in every follower of Jesus' journey is this thing of witnesses, good witnesses and bad witnesses, those that encourage us in our faith journey and those that try to distract us from it. I remember when I had just gone saved and I told my friends that I am no longer going to be hanging out with you. And they said to me, hmm, Tawanda, you must be joking. We give you just one month and we know you'll be back hanging out with us again. But I was dead serious and uh, I've never looked back. It's been over 15 years now. And God is doing great things in my life by grace in Jesus' name. People are not really moved about what we say because it is very easy to say stuff. As they say, talk is cheap. People look at the things that we do. This is why our children learn from us by watching what we do. Let me give you some little parenting one-on-one. -on -one. Teach your children by setting an example for them to follow because they like watching you do things. Do as I say and not, and not as I do is not biblical and does not work. Can you imagine Jesus saying that as he walked with his disciples? I got so encouraged a couple of years ago, this other passerby, as he was just passing, he asked me, which church do you go to? And I looked back at him and I said, why are you asking me that question? And he said, well, I've been watching you for some time and uh, I see light in your life. And uh, I was so uh, touched and so encouraged and it was a blissful moment. But after some time, as I was thinking about it, I say to myself, whoa, so people are always watching me all the time. And there I was thinking I'm living a quiet life, a simple life, minding my own business. And uh, this guy just burst my bubble. And uh, just right there, he. It showed me that you know, people are watching you every time. So I pray to God and I say to God, God, what am I supposed to do? Because people are watching me all the time. And God said to me, well, just be yourself and strive to do what I have called you to do and leave the rest to me. So in other words, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Let us do what God has called us to do. It is not that simple, obviously, because along the way, confusion will come, challenges will come, and people will talk here and there. But if we can focus on what God has called us to do, we would have done well. So let us lay aside every weight and sin. That is, let us put away the junk food and stick to the basics. Let us remove deliberately every destruction and focus on the main thing. Psalm 37 verse 1 to 4 says, Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass they will soon wither, like green plants they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe posture. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. So in as much as people are watching us, the witnesses, we must not forget that it's not about us. It's about God and it's God's race. So I want to also talk, take a moment and talk about God's race. 
It's about who I am running for, not what I am running for. Sometimes we forget whose race this is and start thinking about ourselves. Do I have the right clothes? Do I have the right resources? Or am I well equipped to run this race? Well, guess what? God has chosen you to run this race, fully knowing who you are and what you, your capabilities are. So run because God is with you and God is in it. God has prepared you all these years for you to run. So run. But don't just run. Run with patience. Run seeking Him. Waiting on Him for direction or you will just end up running in the wrong direction. Galatians 2 verse 20 says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. From the moment you understand that it's God's race, every frustration along the way that you will encounter, you will direct it to God. Every challenge you go through, you will find solution in God. It is God that has set the race before you, and God would not have chosen you if he knew you could not do it. Run with God, trust in him, and keep your eyes focused on him, because like Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. So as long as I run with God, all is well with me. What does it mean to run with patience? If you could take that statement alone out of context and say to someone, run, then to someone else, run with patience. Is it the same thing? To just run has no purpose, but to run with passion, but to run with patience, has a purpose. It might sound confusing because running is an action and patience is an attitude. There are two kinds of races which are long distance races that is a marathon and short distance races that which are sprints and trek events. Now long distances are very interesting to me because a lot of skills and techniques are being tested when you run a marathon. Whereas sprints just take a few seconds to run them, or a few minutes like me nowadays can move like I used to. But a marathon relates a lot to our subject today because it's a long, because it's a long and you really have to have your techniques right in relation to your breathing. And your pace. You have to maintain a certain rhythm in your pace because when you run, when you are running a marathon, it's about conserving energy so you can finish the race. You can use all you cannot use all your energy all at once, like a sprint, where you can exert, where you can exert energy to push forward with power so as to be faster. When we apply it to our journey of faith, this means as we do the will of God in our lives, we must know that it is a long journey and it is not going to be easy. It will take time and effort, perseverance and endurance and consistency will be tested and it will demand due diligence. But above all, it is worth it. When you reach the finish line, you will hear the golden voice of the Father saying, you have done well, good and faithful servant. Second Peter chapter 1, from verse 3 to 8 says, According as his divine power, he has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. 
by these he has given us great and precious promises, so that through them you may be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. For this very reason, make effort to supplement your faith with goodness, goodness with knowledge, knowledge with self-control, self-control with endurance, endurance with godliness, godliness with brotherly kindness, and brotherly kindness with love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being useless or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. So these qualities will sustain you and uplift you. It's a long list because the journey is long and the stakes are high. I don't know about you, but there are a lot of things and people that matter to me. Therefore, we have to be diligent and committed to the patience in our race. Then thirdly, once we understand that we are not alone and that there is a past and present cloud of witnesses cheering us on and that we must run the race with patience because it is not about us but about God's race, then we need to fix our eyes on Jesus. However, as I run God's race that he has set before me, the most important Thing I must do is to fix my eyes on Jesus. And it's hard to explain. We have to understand it's a figurative way of saying focus on the things of God and look away from worldly things. When a runner runs a race, whether it is a long distance or a short distance, they do not carry extra baggage or look around them and behind them when they are running because then they will be weighed down and they might trip over something if they are not looking where they are going. They carry as little as they have to to avoid having unnecessary baggage, which allows them to focus only on running the race. Fixing our eyes unto Jesus, making it our main goal and main agenda to fulfill the purpose of the Father, forsaking all other things and putting God first. If I were to give an example of a couple that was just fixing their eyes on Jesus, it would be Zachariah and Elizabeth from the book of Luke chapter 1, verse 1 to 25. I am paraphrasing. And this couple had been married for many years. And Zachariah was a priest in the temple and they were both faithful and righteous before God but they did not have a child because Elizabeth could not conceive despite that they served despite this they served God faithfully and continued to pray to God until one day when it was the time of burning incense in the temple and the worshippers were worshipping outside and Zachariah, as it was his duty, went inside and an angel appeared before Zachariah and he was startled and afraid. And the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, for your prayers have been heard and your wife will bear you a son and his name will be called John. So Zachariah asked the angel, How shall I know this? For I am an old man now and my wife is well stricken. In years and the angel said to him I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and I have sent I've been sent to tell you this good news and now you will be silent and not able to speak until this happens and people waited for Zachariah to come out and they were surprised because he took a long time in the temple. When he came out, he could not speak. Can you imagine how this turned out for Zachariah? At one time, he's speaking, he goes into the temple. Then, in a few minutes, he comes out and he cannot speak. And I think, you know, sometimes, you know, 
God needs to silence some of us because sometimes we run our mouths too much. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith means remaining faithful and continuing to serve God and trust in Him. Good times, in good times and in bad times, and focusing on serving God. It often seems like when it matters the most, destructions show up and try to derail, derail us from where we are supposed to go, and it can be so frustrating. But God has His ways of keeping us in check. Though I wish God would spell out everything so clearly for me, but that is not what God does. And sometimes I have to learn the hard way in my journey as I run with patience. Romans 8 verse 28 to 30 puts it this way. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them that are called according to his purpose. For whom he did for no, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestine, them also he called. And whom he called, them also he justified. And whom he justified, them also he glorified. So whatever I'm going through as I run my race, I know all things are working together for my good. So whatever may come my way, I am going to keep running and keep going until I reach my final destiny. And until I hear that voice of the Father saying, well done, good and faithful servant. So in conclusion, as I close, I don't know what you are facing in your race. It may get long and dark sometimes, but just keep your eyes on Jesus. In whatever you, in whatever way you know how, do not envy evil doers. Their time will come. You are a child of God. Press into the promises of God, knowing that God is working out a way for you. All things are working together for your good. In due season, you will see the fruits. Look away from all else that seems like a destruction to where you are going and stand firm on the purpose and calling that God has called you to do. As you run the race of patience and perseverance, Hold on to God's word, for he will not leave you nor forsake you. Let us pray. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. You watch over us from the beginning of the year to the end of the year. Your presence remains with us, Lord, as we run our race with patience, Lord. We look, fix our eyes on Jesus. We look up unto you, Lord, knowing that you are faithful. You who called us, you will not leave us nor forsake us. Therefore, Lord, we open up our hearts that you speak your word, that you release your spirit upon our lives. In Jesus' name, amen.